Ooh. Right. So, um, Amy, tell me just a little bit about, in general, without names, tell me a little bit about a couple of your team members that you would like to know a little bit more about, um, you know, see them, maybe they're growing, but you could see they could be more effective, or a couple of team members you'd love to just help them be more productive than they are right now. Um, well, most of mine haven't been really doing much. That's where I've been struggling is that they've got other priorities and it's okay. kind of just been put on the back burner. So I'd like to get them motivated again. Okay. Um, I do have one that is, has just decided to do the business. Um, and so I'm really working with her and we're kind of keeping each other motivated, which is really good. Awesome. Um, and, and so it's just trying to figure out how to get them to realize, you know, cause they have at one point really wanted to do this and it's just getting them back into it again. Yeah. If they really want to or say, okay, then, you know, let's find somebody else, you know, to get it going again. Right. Exactly. Okay. And you know, where you've been slightly on, you know, haven't been 100% geared up business because you're right. in, you know, that's what you should do. So life is crazy. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Nothing wrong with you. You did it just, you know, it's like, I don't know. We all like follow up and to be, you know, yeah. So, you know, I kind of did it halfway. I wasn't building. I wasn't, I was kind of maintaining while other people were building. So, right. Exactly. So this is going to be a pretty proactive approach. So let me tell you a little bit about some of my philosophies so that they'll make sense as we're going through some of these things. Okay. Um, you're going to get caught up on some of these thought processes in the other class that you attend today. Are you staying on for the 8 o'clock class or are you joining us for 8 o'clock my time? 8, 9, 10. I should be able to because I have something at noon. But I, yeah, so if it's just okay. an hour, I'll be good. Mm -hmm. All right. So one of the things you'll learn about in the next hour is called motivational style. And so I'm not going to review that right now because I know that will catch you up on that part. Okay. And it's a couple of questions you ask your team members and so that you're really careful to make sure you're focusing on why they do it because why they do it and you do it may not be the same. Yep. We have a tendency to bring up the thing, the reason why we would do something and um, and we think that that's motivating, but if it's totally opposite from theirs, we're actually sh shutting them down and we don't even realize it. Oh, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I'll get more into that. The other thing that I'm a huge believer in is personalizing different people's challenges. You know how as a team sometimes we'll probably go meet 10 people, go get 12 no's, go get, mm -hmm. you know, book two classes you know we'll have like this overall challenge for people and it just seldom you know you might have 10 20 percent of your team do it right I mean you just right it, it doesn't yeah. usually it's not but I mean 80 percent of your work is done by 20 percent of your people it's just kind of how it goes yeah. yeah there actually is a way you know it's like with our kids quote, quote, fair is a relative term um, we don't do the exact same thing with each kid because guess what? They just don't have the same exact same needs and the exact same right. learning styles and all sorts of things. So one of the things I'm a big believer in is a simple three-step, four-step process actually is in where you as doTERRA are taught to touch your team members once a week. This is actually pretty effective. And I even have people with other companies that you know you have those team members who will only text and even sometimes we're right. we can only text because <laughs> um we're moms and you know we're mm -hmm. yelling at one kid or making dinner or, you know and so texting is mm -hmm. nice for that type of situation too so there's this four-step process okay the first one is asking our team members coming asking them if finding a challenge that we think would be good for them. So for somebody, it's finding people. For somebody, it's taking on classes. For somebody, it's starting to talk to their team members about being builders. And for some, it's talking about their builders and staying motivated. You know what I mean? It's like okay. one challenge doesn't fit all. And I have some people who will kind of freak out and go, whoa, 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 I can't do that with all team members. I'm like, you're calling them anyway. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. But you come up with a challenge that makes sense for them, first of all, okay? Then you ask them on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable are you with that? Okay. And 
if it's seven or below, you can be pretty sure they're not going to do it. Okay. okay. So if they're not eight, nine, 10, then you got to redefine the challenge. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound like you're like as comfortable or as excited about it as you could be. So what would be a better challenge? You know, bring the number down mm -hmm. or focus on a different point or something. Make it work for them. Yeah. And then, you know, so until we get up to eight to 10, then that's the challenge you're moving on. Ask them, okay, looking at your calendar, like have them get their calendar out, looking at your calendar, when are you going to accomplish that? Okay, Tuesday morning by Tuesday night, I'll call you or send you a text. And they need okay. to know you're going to follow up with them. Okay. And mm -hmm. the whole goal is to get them into business habits. I mean, if you think about yourself, it, it, it takes, you know, you're sort of off your business habits right now because you have yeah. to change. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And this person may be wanting to do stuff and they're off their habits too. The whole goal is to get them into business habits, then believing in themselves that we're just empowering them because you're not doing it for them. You're just helping them make a choice and, and choose to take the time to do it. Right. Okay. So, and then, like I said, you, you have to follow up when you say you will. Two reasons. One, to celebrate with them. And if they didn't do it, I understand. When would you like to do it now? Like, no guilt. No, why didn't you? Like, don't ask why ever because it really doesn't matter. Okay, right. What would you like to do now? And if they're making tons of excuses, I just go, so are you telling me maybe this isn't a good time to build your business? No, no, no. Okay. So then which activity would you like to do? Like, I don't let them keep going down the excuses complaint road. Okay. I think it, it doesn't do any good. Right. I'm like, I totally get it. I'm a mom too. I'm busy too. I'm, you know, have a husband, you know, whatever, whatever it is they're venting about. Mm -hmm. You just say, I totally understand, you know, give them the opportunity to bail. And most of the time they're going to tell you, no, 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 that's not what I want to do. They're just looking for some empathy. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Based on that. So Jordan has heard this little 12 step process now. So. <laughs> Okay. Oh, several times. Is it working well for you, Jordan? Tell her a little bit about how it's working for you. How those questions? Uh -huh. Um, I think that it's working well and that I get to kind of get to know them a little bit better. And because I was just figured that everybody, I mean, there's not a lot to it. It's just, I don't know. I didn't know that you could go that in depth and I just wasn't aware of all those questions. And, and so I'm excited to just, I'm excited to teach them how to thing. And um, I just felt like I learned a lot of different things about those people and just helps me help them more. It's good. So it's fun. Okay, so this morning's topic, we're going to talk about um, consistency, tools for consistency. Um, so like I said, um, Amy, you're on a bit of a learning curve because there's going to be several things we're going to talk about that I um, would have assumed you would have learned in the 90-day challenge, Jordan, we are okay. familiar with. So you're going to have to kind of take it in and realize you're going to like catch up <laughs> That's fine. on the back end, okay? Okay. One of the things that's really, 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 really important, I mean, like, so important to get yourself, your team members to understand is that 90% of what we do out of our inner life is out of habit, okay? That when they're like, see, this is what I see happen, is most of the time people either, either give a monthly challenge, sometimes they give a weekly challenge, and because we don't follow up very quickly, I mean, we follow up at the end of the month and we say we will, but then the end of the month comes and people go, oh, shoot, I forgot and I never really did work on it, okay? Right. And, and then they beat themselves up. I'm lazy. I'm this. I'm not organized. I mean, there's like 16,000 different things people say to themselves, okay? And I'm telling people all the time, you're not lazy. You're not unorganized. It's just not part of your habit yet. We just need to make it a part of your life. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you'll see on here I'm going to talk about today is if you were to start a new job, 
you know, J-O-B, if you were to go out and have a job where you punch a time clock or check in the computer, whatever, yep. that you would set alarms, you'd make arrangements for your kids, there's all these things you do, and yet you're not being that deliberate with your business. Let's be more deliberate with our business because we get to control how much we make, whereas we don't at a regular job. Use the exact same tools we would when we're starting a new job in starting a business. And I really want people to wrap their mentality around this, that you, you, you know, if you're going to be home at a different time, you make a different arrangement for what time you'd have dinner with them. You learn to crock pot cook. You learn to, you know, we change things up and we make arrangements so that our family still gets what they need. We still get what we need and it, it can work, but it takes setting habits and creating habits isn't easy but it's definitely not impossible is that makes it, you know, it's like, yeah, you're going to create habits and, and creating habits isn't the easiest thing to do, but that's okay. We're going to give you tools and we're going to support you and we're going to follow up and we're going to help make this habit, this habit, <laughs> this happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the whole thing is help them be empowered and excited, but at the same time, we're not doing the work for them. We're following up. Okay. okay. Being leaders versus hand holders. Okay? okay. And so there's several different things, and Jordan's been using some of these. Um, let's see. Okay. So I have lots and lots of different tools that you can use to create habits. And one of them is a tracker, which you probably have printed off mm -hmm. for the, um, the I think nice so. challenge. Yeah. And the tracker is something that you want to start introducing to your teams. Some people, the little beaver type people that love that organization, love that accountability, love paperwork, it's going to work really great for some and others are just not going to want to do it. Right. That comes back to the motivational style and I'll tell you something about that. But see, using the tracker, that could be somewhere where you have an incentive for team members. Okay. And you could schedule emails or texts that go out to remind people to use it. The other thing I do is to pull an alarm on your own phone, mm -hmm. it off every night, print it off, put it by your bed, set an alarm on your phone. And I'll tell him, you know what, you can text me at night and tell me that you filled in your tracker. Go ahead and, you know, let me be your accountability partner. But see, I turn my phone off, all the volume, the, you know, the ringing, yeah. the vibrating, everything. I don't care if you text me two in the morning, go for it. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, because my thing, so that's why I tell them, like, I don't care what time you text me, don't worry about it. Just text and then I'll mm -hmm. congratulate you when I'm awake. Um, and so the whole thing is that we've got to get people into habits. They come in excited and they make the time to do a few different things because they're excited. And then when the consistency and the, oh, I have to work consistently to make money, registers and the excitements wore off, then that's when we see people die sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. yep. seen that a million times. So this is what we want to have happen is this consistency, this habit, and that they weren't just doing because they were excited. They were doing things also because they have good tools. All right. Mm -hmm. So the tracker, rather they want to use a tracker or they, um, one of the other things, a company I was with at um, their kits were very, very cheap. They, they said, we invest in you it was a jewelry company. for a hundred bucks. Here's a thousand dollars worth of jewelry. We're going to get you started. But for doing this, you have to have six parties on the calendar to get the kit. And that way it forced people to actually book their parties before. We right. Now your company is not the same. You can't use the same kind of carrots to do that. But you can totally say, hey, look, if you're going to be successful, you've got to have classes booked. you got yeah. to have people that you want to share this with. Okay. So because you want to be successful with this, we're going to be deliberate. And let's figure out who you're going to have. How can get their calendar out? How can get their list of, you know, circle of influence out? Get those things out and do those things with them. Don't give them as assignments. Okay. Do them with do them. them. With them. And then the thing you want to do is then follow up that 24 hours after 
each assignment was due, you know, like they were supposed to call so-and-so and see if they could do a class or they do a class or, or even they just come and, and watch you at a class. Mm-hmm. Make sure there's always, there's something that they're going to do next. There's always a call to action. Okay. Okay. Um, so, but you could definitely use the tracker. Everybody who, there, you come up with a percentage at the end of the week. Everybody who emails you in their percentage, and it doesn't matter how big it is, it doesn't matter if it's 10% or 90%, email it in. That, to me, would be a good challenge for the group because everybody's activity is different but the whole idea is we're just establishing habits and some person's habit that's more across their t's dot their eyes if you know they booked one class and did one one on one and got on the phone for a little while that's huge you have a team builder like jordan who had four classes and recruited three new people and you know they're not going to have the same activity goals or what I call effort. Right. That's okay. But holding them accountable to get their habits set, that's huge for you. Okay? So that's the thing. I keep – it's it's not that – team leaders just didn't know anything else to do. They just put this general challenge out to the whole group, and some of them would do it. And we all know mm-hmm. it's not terribly effective. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, but we just, we're grasping at straws. What else do we do? Okay. Mm-hmm. Personalize, personalize, personalize the, the different um, challenges for them. Let them pick their challenge. Like I said, if they're not comfortable with it by an eight, probably ain't going to happen. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, and there's nothing wrong, because believe me, that person who, you've got those who overthink things, and that's why it takes them so long to move. you got those, and that deal usually comes into fear. Um, you've got those who feel like they have to have their ducks on a row. They're just misorganizers, and, you know, I've got to know everything about every oil and, you know, make themselves nuts. <laughs> the whole thing is we want to just give them opportunities to have success, so that when they've had success and you go, see, you didn't know about every single oil and yet you still sold stuff. It'll be okay. Mm-hmm. So we do this again. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Okay, great. Now what you what are you going to do next? <laughs> right. So follow up with them. That's the question. What are you going to do next? So Jordan, you've asked all these really good questions of people and are finding out what things you're going to follow up with them. When you follow up with them, you need to go through that same thing again. Okay. So what are you going to do next? Are you going to do the same consistency and make sure you're consistent with this? Or do you want to step it up a little bit more? Mm-hmm. Doing optional closes, okay, is a really good thing. And then, again, we're going to follow up. Get yourself an alarm. This is when you need to follow up with somebody, okay? Um, let me see here. The other, okay, so here's a couple other ideas to help them create consistency. If you have, I would pair up people who are on similar levels, okay? You know, you'll have leaders, you have brand new people. I would match up with someone who's maybe just a little bit ahead of them because they need to know that there's somebody that they, um, that knows a little bit more than they do. But you can meet, meet, people up and have them become accountability partners so you're not having to account for everyone quite as heavily. Okay. Another way to do it. Um, And then let me go back to tracker. Sorry, I'm I'm reading my notes on my second screen here. Okay, on the tracker, there's one other thing that you can do. Down at the bottom, there's some space. And mm-hmm. one of the things I've done is inserted pictures in there. You add a text box and you put pictures in there of what their goals are. So as they're doing their tracker, they remember why they're doing this activity that quite frankly isn't always fun, but there's a why. And then add feeling words at the top of the page. How's it going to feel when these things are accomplished? Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of cool ways to use the tracker. 
and I haven't had time yet. I was meeting with my mentor. I think I'm going to flip the tracker almost upside down. Right now, the activity goes at the bottom of the page. Have you used the tracker very much? It's okay if you hadn't, Jordan. I'm just curious. Not that much. You're consistent. It's just yeah. for people to do that they need it to get them consistent. Um, but right now, the numbers are on the top. The days go backwards, and then the, um, the goals are on the bottom. I think I'm going to flip it so the goals are on the top. You go down the calendar, and you add at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's just mentors like, why don't you flip it and do it this way? And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. So sometimes it's good to have a second set of eyes to look at things that we do. Yep. Um, so when I get that done, I'll get it out to everybody. But, you know, there's a whole limited hours thing. It gets me every day. <laughs> All right. So let me tell you another story and one more idea. Um, the other thing that's fun to do is we have lots of reminders of why we're doing things. Okay? Well, um, have you guys ever printed off Avery labels? Yeah. Okay. So you know there's like all sizes. So mm -hmm. there's like the little one inch squares or the circles. Like you want to take something that's more like a sticker size. Okay. I don't care if square, circle, oval, whatever it is. And what I like to do is have people put in there a symbol of something that they really want to get out of their business. Okay. So Jordan, um, you've heard me talk about goals a million times. Tell me one like really solid goal, a why that you're doing your business. Sorry, that kind of cut out. Tell, tell her a why. Somebody? Yeah. Tell me a why that you're doing your business. Like that money that you're making, tell me one solid why that what you're going to do with that money. What, where's that going to get you? Um, the biggest reason why I really wanted to do this in the money is so that we can get um, a bigger house and so that we can have more kids. Okay. That is so, yep. She's an amazing mom. She has the most darling two boys. She's such a good <laughs> mom. So Jordan, can you picture in your brain one individual picture that would symbolize that goal? Yeah. Do you mind telling us the picture? A picture of the house I want. Um, <laughs> okay. And so, to just think about walking through that house and, and just everything that will come along with it. And so it just kind of pushes me more when you can actually visualize it. Cool. So taking a picture of that house mm -hmm. and printing it on those Avery labels and putting them everywhere, okay, so let me, let me tell you a story. Um, there was a gal that I was working with, and she was a swimmer. Um, do either of you have any swimming experience? You know what a 50 free means? Mm -hmm. A 50 free is swimming from one end of the pool to the other in an Olympic length pool, okay? All right. And she wanted to do a 25-second 50 free. So from one end to the other, 25 seconds. She was a high school swimmer. She went to the coach. The coach said, I don't think you can do that. I don't understand why anyone would say that, but whatever. And <laughs> so I said, well, Caitlin, why don't you come hang out at my house once a week, and we'll see if mentally we can kind of help you accomplish the goal. So we started with a bucket list. And we did all sorts of stuff, okay, green boards. And then we got really focused on her goal on her swimming. And we put 25s everywhere. We cut them out in vinyl, put them all over her walls. Uh, and she had it painted on her toenails. This last thing you see before you go in the pool. She had a bracelet. Her mom wrote it on her lunch bag every single day and on her napkin. 25s everywhere, 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 everywhere. So um, she actually surpassed her goal. She did better than she even put down, which was like crazy exciting. And I got thinking about it because it was, I mean, she was one of my first clients and she didn't pay me anything. I was just like, let's just see what happens. I know all this stuff. Let's play around with some of these principles. And so I called her mom and I said, Hey, look, is there, I, I just was curious if you really thought this had any, if this really helped or if she would have done it anyway, did this really make any difference? Mm -hmm. She says, no, she goes, I really believe it helped. So there was this one night, it was nine o'clock at night, and um, 
she says, Caitlin says, Mom, I got to run to the gym. I got to go do my dry land training. You're training outside the pool. Mm-hmm. I was like, Caitlin, it's 9 o'clock at night. She goes, well, I promised myself that every day I was going to do my dry land training. And this is the only time I have to do it. She says her habits changed. Okay. And that's the whole key with our people is we can't take for granted that the excitement is going to stay high. We can't take for granted that they're going to be able to create these habits without really thinking about it. And, and it's because they're human, not because they're dumb, not because they're not intelligent, not because they're not organized. It just takes effort and they, they're already busy, right? Is there anyone that yeah. you, you sign up that went, I'm so glad I finally have something to do. I've been reading some <laughs> mom, mom, and watch and soap, okay? Yeah. Like, nobody was it like, oh, yeah, I have just been wondering what I could do to fill my time. <laughs> so that's the thing. We're like, look, we know that this is hard, but we have tools to make it less hard. That's all it is. We just have mm-hmm. some tools to help you make it less hard, <laughs> easier. Okay. Yeah. So it's those kind of things we want to do. Um, and the other thing that's really important to know is when we get them to set their goals, the first set of goals, okay, if they're newbies, you ask them what they want to do. Okay, this is like the most annoying statement and what makes me want to jab my eyes out, but like they all say it. I just want, oh, I just thought I'd try this and see what happens. Yeah. Like the worst statement that could be made because it's mm-hmm. like, oh, let's just, you might as well say, I don't care if I fail. I'm like, ah, um, it's okay though. It'll get better. We help them get some success. We help them realize goals do get accomplished and it gets better, but we want to nail them down and go, you know what? I totally make sense, but something's more likely to happen. If you set a goal, I don't care how small or big it is, but let's set something Based on that goal, how many classes are you going to have to do or how many one-on-ones? Let's break down that goal. I mean, for some, it might be for seven days. I would say 30 days, what's the long-term goal, and then break that up into weeks. Mm -hmm. If you have a week, you're going on vacation, then we're going to divide that goal up by three, not by four. You're not going to work that week. Go play with your family. So this Mm -hmm. is the other three weeks. No guilt. No, just practical. Just just practical about this. No big deal and get them on track and they go, Oh, I can do this. I do make money. Then you do another goal setting activity. Okay. You need to do goal setting activities every 30 days. And then that refuels the fire and gets them on track again. Okay. Okay. And that's the thing. It's, we so take for granted as leaders that they're just going to do it because we, you know, give us great training once a month or something. And, it just, and it's not because your training wasn't great. It wasn't because they didn't care or any of those things. It's just, this is life. It just, we're all busy. Okay. So down on the second part of the agenda, I'm really hoping that this can be a tool for leaders to help their new people sit down and think about this. Okay, so on the left-hand side, you've got new employment habits, and on the right-hand side, you have starting building habits, and how so many of them are similar, but the problem is that so many of them don't get applied when you're starting a new business, and that, look, let's make sure that you're being just as deliberate as you would if you were starting a new job, Okay? okay, and that these are some things you're going to have to think about and adjustment and changes and plans you're going to have to make. But it's going to feel really good because this is what you want out of your business. And you can be delivered about this and your family still like you and, you know, and all those kind of things, which they don't understand at first when you, you know, can get into the business heavy. But being really deliberate, okay? So, um, see if these are some things that you resonate with you. So the first one is just the night before. Um, anyone who's starting a new job, and let's say it's a little earlier than normal, is there anyone who wouldn't set an alarm to make sure that they get up and that they're on time mm-hmm. and all those kind of things? And yet here, you know, we start new businesses. We don't start alarms. We just assume we'll get up and do things without actually putting it on a planner or in our phone or whatnot and being delivered about our actions. 
you know, it doesn't just happen. We have to be deliberate about it. Okay. So at night, you know, what are you going to eat? What are the meals? What things do you need to prepare for your business? Okay. All those kind of things. But let's do it nightly. Let's start doing daily planning. Let's get our nights prepared for the next day. Okay. That's what you do if you had a job. So in the morning, do we keep shutting off the alarm and blow off and just be late for work? Or do we get up and we get to work? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, the whole goal is to tell people and help them work for yourself as hard as you would somewhere else, or maybe even harder or smarter. Make sure that you care as much about your business as you do somebody else's business who you go and work for. This is your baby. You get to decide what your raise is. Jordan, is it amazing that you, like, I don't know what your income has increased in the last four to six months, but do you love the fact that you know if you want to raise, you, you, you go do more classes and sign more people up, like you know how to give yourself a raise? It's kind of fun, huh? Or is it a regular J-O-B? You don't know if and when you're, I mean, some have things set up, so then you know when you're going to get a raise, but most don't, right? Okay. So thinking about those kind of things. Um, you know, helping people understand, dress the part. What? How do you want to feel? What kind of, what to you feels like you're in business mode? Dress the part. Um, and being prompt about things is important. Okay. The other thing that I see happen all the time is people don't like sit down with their families and really discuss what this means. Starting this business, these are the kind of hours you're going to be working. These are the perks that are going to be out of it. Um, one of the lessons in the 90 day challenge is that as a family, you set goals together and that's fun. You did that with your husband, right, Jordan? The goal, the family goal setting. You did that with your husband, right? Okay. And when you do that with your kids, you learn a lot. And her kids are too young for that yet. But it's, it's really cool what happens. But the family needs to know what's going to be different. You would do that if you had a new job. By the way, mom's got to be out the door, so you're going to go to the bus stop or, you know, whatever it might be. Same thing. So one of my big things is that you do two-hour phone calling sessions in your week. You may only need one, you might need a couple, but do it in a block of time because you actually get a lot more done and you spend less time on the phone if you just do it in one block. That's an example. Mm -hmm. My family, I mean, I had to train my husband because, you know, if you're in the house, kids usually come to mom first. Right. And had to train them and train my husband unless the house is on fire. <laughs> that mm -hmm. was the only, well, maybe kid needs to go to the ER or something. But unless the house is on fire, you are not to interrupt me when I am my phone calls, okay? And and it it's okay, you know, it takes practice. They'll interrupt you a couple times. But train your family that when it's work time, because that's what's hard about working from home, is that we're constantly interrupted. Mm -hmm. Jordan has an amazing habit of doing her phone calls during her kids' um, nap times. She's very consistent about working when her kids are down and playing when her kids are up. I mean, she's amazing at this. I learned from her, okay? So training your family to understand what needs to happen. So, you know, you're taking that in, but this is what we need to explain to our team members. Right. Wouldn't that be different if, like, we told them, I mean, I don't know if any, you've ever done that before, but they need to know something's going to be different. You know, what, what are you going to do for meals? If you're doing classes at night, um, one of your little things that you put on, you know, if you have a team page on Facebook or what it might be, mm. you might have a, Hey, everybody share a crock pot recipe day, you know, help people think outside the box. How are we going to do this? Make your family still fed. You're not feeling guilty and, you know, living on McDonald's or whatever it might be. That right. <laughs> okay. But that's the thing. We have to empower people and tell them that this is what we have to do. Because they're not thinking about, oh, I've got to be as deliberate as I do when I'm starting a new job. But we can mentally prepare them and give them good tools. Okay? All right. So um, the other thing, okay, so to me the two main things that happen when somebody starts a job, they readjust their schedule and they remember why they're doing it. Okay? 
So people are doing it either to pay off a bill or they have something that they want to, you know, save money for. Maybe it's a new car or like Jordan saying, you know, down payment on a house or whatever it might be. Or they're doing it because they love the work, right? Okay. Right. It, it's something about the work that's um, mm -hmm. fulfilling or it's a gift they have or it's, you know, a dream job or whatever it might be. Um, and it's usually like kind of a mixture of those things. Mm -hmm. You need to have those reasons why they're starting this business down just the same way as you have those reasons in the back of your head, which is why you check in every day and you do what you have to to not get fired. Okay. Right. We don't want you firing yourself. <laughs> so let's be delivered about it. And then the other thing is what's really cool is then you get to talk about how is it going to feel when you're making extra money and you get control of your schedule and you get to decide your raises and maybe they're wanting to replace a job that they have now. How is that going to feel? Hanging on to those things and being able to go back and, and when you have someone who falls off and you know all these things and they have really specific reasons, you don't want to say, hey, but you said you wanted this. We just instead say, hey, tell me a little bit more about this reason why you started in the first place. You got to get them talking about it. If you talk at them, they'll go, oh, no, no, that's really not that big a deal. We just want to spark and ask, hey, tell me a little bit more about why you were doing this. So when they start falling off and they start making excuses, we kind of want to jump in and fix it. But don't do that. Um, jump in and help them talk about their whys again. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that stuff still the same as high on the priority list as it was when you started? Okay. And we go right back to, so tell me what activity you would like to do this week then. Okay. okay. So, But it's always that bring it right back. Talk about their whys, go back to the activity, make a commitment. Talk about their whys, go back to the commit, commitment, okay? That's the type we're going to do until it's 100% consistent with people. Okay, the other thing that you want to teach them is to plan time for their family, themselves, the, you know, whatever it might be. Right. Um, and, you know, take their calendar, mark off the days they are not available, they, you know, the people at their party don't have to know why those days aren't available, but, and then circle the days they do want to have classes or one-on-ones or whatnot, okay, and teach them how to control their calendar, mm -hmm. um, and that in there on their personal calendar at home is scheduled time with family, time with husband, you know, community service, church, you know, time with girlfriends, whatever it may be that they still have balance because if they get resentful towards their business, you're going to lose them. Yeah. So they got to be balanced and it's better that they go a little slower, but are consistent than shoot out and then die. That, that, that comes back and bites you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some people can shoot out and still keep going. Um, just, you know, remind them, Hey, when you're taking time to date your husband, you know, we need time for this. Okay the last thing to teach them is to work in blocks of time. Um, it's, it's really amazing when there's, you know, we'll have a list of things to do. People to email, hostess coaching to do, um, follow up with team members. If people will work in blocks of two hour time, they will get done and they can go back to being moms or these different things. Um, when you have someone in Jordan's situation, she's, on the block of time that her kids are sleeping and if that's cut right. out, you know, if that's not two whole hours, well, she's not just going to ignore them and let them scream. Jordan's too good a mom for that. <laughs> but some would, but that's probably not the best idea. You know, so sometimes you don't have complete control over that or get creative and find someone to swap blocks of time with. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're like, I want to work, you know, two hours or four hours every Tuesday afternoon at four, you know, swap kids or make the agreement with your husband. You know, if I get these tires to work, you and I will watch your baseball game or watch a movie together, whatever. Okay. Right. Get creative about finding blocks of time. Um, the other thing is to set timers for yourself when you're working. 
set a timer for an hour or two hours and you're just going to work, work, work as fast as you can until that's up. And when you know there's an end, we're more likely to work hard than if we just think, uh, I feel like this list is never going to be done. Well, and you're working in Canada for a long time. Right. Um, removing all interruptions. Um, and the other thing to think about is if you had a job and if you wouldn't do that activity when you're at your job, you know, hours and hours on Facebook or that, that's my weakness. That's why I say that um, <laughs> are those kind of things. If you wouldn't do it on your employer's time. Don't do it on your time. Don't fire yourself. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself employed. <laughs> okay. So tell me how you feel like approaching it and telling them these tools. How how different will that feel being a team leader? And what do you feel like your team members will how their business differently? Um, I think you know I can see because I know my my leaders pretty well. I kind of know their you know a little bit about their lives and stuff, and I can see where it could fit in better to, you know, give them smaller goals instead of making them feel overwhelmed with a big goal mm -hmm. and just being consistent with them. And, and, you know, the, the good questions of why did you want to do this and remind them and get them boosted up again. Yeah. And you know what? Um, try using, tell me more about instead of why, um, okay. especially, I mean, for a newbie, it's got to be wise, but um, so let me give you a series of questions. There's tell me more about this thing you know they want to pay for. You know, I guess right. Jordan, you know, let's say Jordan called me and was in total funk and was like, screw this. I just can't do it anymore. Okay. I mean, I've never had her do that. I don't know if she ever feels that way, but okay, let's just pretend. Mm -hmm. and say, Jordan, I'm so sorry you're having a bad day. Man, that is hard. You know what? Sometimes it helps me when I dream. Tell me more about that house that you're excited to have. Tell me all about the details. Let them go off on dreamland, okay? okay? But instead of, now, tell me more about why you wanted to have a new house versus tell me more about it. Okay. Um, it it kind of comes off just a little bit different. Um, so then I'll ask, hey, is that still as important as it was when you got started? Yes, I totally want that house, okay. Is there anything else that you're wanting now? Now that you started your business and you see you can make money, is there anything else that you've added for a why? Is there any other reason you've thought about that you'd want to make this successful? And a lot of times there is. So that helps you with your team leaders to keep building up the whys. Um, like I said, you, you're obviously going to approach this totally different with a brand new person than you are builders that you know that are trying to build. Um, but some of those questions come off very differently and, you know, some even say the word why and it like makes people defensive, you know, it, it, cause we're used That's to, true. You know, why did you do that is, mm -hmm. is usually the question behind it, but you're not actually asking that. Um, but why is just, I don't know, they come off kind of funny sometimes to some people, some people can hear it and it doesn't make them defensive at all, but some people, Ooh, they're going to get the talk to the hand kind of attitude, um, from them. Um, and that's the thing you need to find out if their priorities are the same from when they started. If it's someone who's a builder versus a brand new person. So tell me more about this on a scale of one to 10. How important to you? Is that the same as when you got started or is it higher or lower? And then, you know, do I keep talking about this or not? What else is there that might be on your list of why is to do this now? Okay. So Jordan, how do you feel about this? Where you have a ton more new people. Um, Amy's been doing this for a long time. So she's more remotivating people and you're more getting started with people. How do you think explaining this, these, you know, you have a job habit versus starting new business habits. How do you think that will help you explain to people what they need to do to be successful? It is cutting out today for some reason. Um, I heard bits and pieces of that, um, but I'm not exactly sure what the let me try it. And you're cutting out. Question was, it's helped me out in both remotivating some of my older builders and then 
it's really helped also with um, my new builders in a bunch of different aspects of asking all those questions. Um, yeah. You know, I think I just had an idea. Um, yeah. You know, on the right hand side of the page, these starting your business habits, I think I'll put together a worksheet. I always, uh, I always give myself two things to do and put, you know, okay, when will you set an alarm? Like what, when in your week will you work? You know, what time will you set alarms? Um, you know, how will you dress when you're doing business? Um, when will you explain to your family what you need to do and what kind of alternative plans will you make? Um, what are your whys and let's stay focused on that. When are you going to play and balance? And, you know, so it's kind of a checkoff list and a worksheet. Would yeah. that be helpful to have when you're sitting down with a new team member? Think about yeah. it. So. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah. um, one would be good, too. Okay. I mean, you could do it to reboot people and get their habits restarted or with a brand new person. Yeah. I'm just thinking that when we go through these things, it might be, if they're not writing it down, yeah. it might be just a good conversation, but might yeah. not be as proactive as it could be. Okay, I gotta think to do that. I really need a personal assistant. <laughs> good with creating forms like this. Okay, I'm going to think about putting that together for you for next week, and you guys can let me know how it works. Um, because I, I'm really feeling strongly about this, that it's like people need to be deliberately told, you're going to have different habits. You've got to create different habits um, to be successful. And I think this could be really powerful to sit down and fill this out with your team members. And the thing is, you can email it to them, and you can talk about it on the phone, or you can do Zoom, or you can do Skype, or you can text, you know, okay, let's fill in this sheet together. Um, have them take a picture of it and send it back to you, okay? Yes, it is so much more ideal if we can sit down with each individual person. Um, when there's proximity, so it doesn't happen, so people won't meet with you, you know, there's different reasons people will do things. Um, obviously this would be a great form to have everybody fill out if you happen to have a team meeting, you know, where your people who live in the area come together. You could do this as a group with as many people as you could and then have, you know, pair people up and have them compare notes and help them fill in places where they need some brainstorming. Um, so there's several different ways you could use this. But it would be one more thing that, you know, okay, by the end of the week, everybody who's turned in their worksheets to me, you know, we'll do a prize for, you know, whatever, bottle of oil, whatever it is that you guys do. So, and, and you know, they're not all going to do it. it. It's frustrating. <laughs> but the ones that do do it, they'll be more successful. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What questions do you ladies have for me? Jordan, I don't, you're breaking up for me and I'm breaking up for you. It's smooth with Amy. It hasn't been broken up with Amy. So I'm hoping the recording will be well for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So weird since we got on Zoom. I know, because we haven't had this problem. Amy, I'm not cracking up for you, right? You hear me? No, uh-uh. No, it's all fine. Okay, the recording, I don't know, it's its a something between you and I, Jordan. It's not the thing in general. I'm not sure what's wrong. Sometimes if you log back off and log back on, it'll get a better connection. Yeah, there you go. But is there any team members you'd like to focus on? Any questions about things we've you know, talked about in the past, anything that I can help you with specifically? I think with mine, because I'm far away from them, um, you know, and then in a year we're going to be moving again because, uh, you know, that's military life. Right. But, you know, and it's just being consistent and also it's hard sometimes. I'm, I'm lucky because I have older kids that can watch the younger ones. Right. Um, but my husband's schedule can change at the drop of the hat. You know, I can get a phone call and say, I'm taking a plane ride. We're going to be gone for three days. And, you know, and so that's just where I have to somewhat, I can rely on him, but somewhat I can't. 
And right. so I have to be, you know, I have to kind of have a dual schedule to kind of, okay, if this happens, then this is what my backup is. And so it makes it a little more difficult sometimes. Yeah. But also my team members are in Washington state, some of them. And so it's just, you know, figuring out ways to connect with them, even though I'm not there. So this thing, Zoom, you can use this for free for up to 40 minutes. Um, so like I tried it a couple times where I paid for it and then you can have up to 25 faces on here for 10 bucks a month. That's not so, bad. Yeah, I know for $10. You can, I mean, I use this I mean, and you could use it 24 seven. Like okay. you could have nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Do that, but there's no limit to it. I mean, you only have one going at a time, but you, you can go as long as you want. Right. So, um, and it usually runs really smooth. I don't know why Jordan and I are breaking up this morning, but I, I tried Google Hangout for a long, I, I did everything under the yeah. sun to make it work. And I had too many cracks and breaks and people couldn't get on and oh my gosh, I don't know why that's so difficult. Um, but then the cool thing about this is I can record this and I can throw it on my YouTube channel and anyone that misses it can go watch it after. That's good. So, it's one of those things where you can duplicate yourself and go, Oh, you missed it. Well, go get, watch the video and then we'll chat. Yeah. <laughs> so that you kind of like spoon feeding everybody. Does that you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. So that's the thing is like, we have to be consistent till they get habits, but we empower them and, you know, make sure they do whatever they can on their side. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I can see where I need to be more consistent at stuff. I can kind of be a little lazy. We've kind of gone with the kids and figured out, you know, to make the summer not lazy, we schedule each day. Okay, we're going to go swimming this day. We're going to go bowling this day. We're going to go to the zoo this, you know. Right. And that makes me kind of accountable instead of, well, what are we going to do today? And then nothing gets done. Exactly. Yep, I hear you. You're totally normal. So, and it's hard. Okay. But that's the thing. You can be that deliberate. Right. So. Yep. You know, and then school starts here in just a couple of weeks. So, cause we start in August. Um, so that'll make it nice. Cause everybody will be back on a schedule. So right. I think that'll be a little bit easier, you know, yeah. life gets busy, but it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anything I can do for you, Jordan? Anything I can do for you? I don't think so. No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to check in with kids, fill my water, and I will be back, Amy, in seven minutes. To okay. Sounds good. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All so, right. You're superwoman. You're amazing. Keep doing your thing, okay? All right. Have a good one, guys. All right. Bye.